Hello folks, I'm AJ Camacho and welcome to Pindrop World News. Today we're going to be giving you an explainer of Argentina's recent elections. At the end, you'll hear some insight and analysis from the former U.S. Ambassador to Argentina, Edward C. Prado. Now, let's get into the issues that the Argentines were looking at this time around. There were many. Abortion, which the country only legalized three years ago as well as crime, which has been steadily decreasing for the past nine years, but remains relatively high. Chief of all of these, as anyone who knows Argentina will already know, is the economy. In 1895, the average Argentine was as wealthy as the average American. But in 1995, the average American was three times as wealthy as the average Argentine. After a steep economic decline in the early 20th century, Argentina's economy has stagnated despite immense natural resource wealth. So what's the reason for this? Well, chiefly, I would say, and most experts would say, it's corruption. Despite this natural resource wealth, those in charge often use it to serve themselves rather than the country. Famously, in the 1920s, the Argentine Legislative Assembly effectively sold the country's entire beef industry to Great Britain. They made a good profit, but the Argentine people as a whole didn't. In addition to this economic uh, subservience to other countries, there has been a high spending rate in Argentina since left-wing governments called Peronists took control in the mid-1900s. This high spending has only been increasing despite taxes not keeping up. And with the government spending more than it has, they have to take out debts. And when they don't repay those debts, investors lose confidence in doing business in the country. And the Argentine peso declines in value. This contributes to several knock-on effects. For one, with the Argentine peso declining in value, there is inflation, which has skyrocketed to a whopping 122% year over year today a record high over the past 20 years. With that high inflation, Argentines don't want to invest their money in the peso. They don't want to hold on to money. And in fact, the US dollar has become a sort of secret black market side uh, currency that is used relatively widely in the country. In addition to inflation, there is poverty, which has reached a whopping 40% this year after a steady decline over the past several years. So how do Argentines want to tackle this? Well, on November 19th, they elected Javier Millet of the Libertad Avanza party. Millet is very eccentric in his own right. He has great sideburns, I'll give him credit for that. His campaign symbol was a chainsaw, which he held up in the air saying that he would slash government spending. And he has a dog, which he named after a famous Austrian school economist. Sorry, he has five dogs four of which are clones of the first one, and yes, they are all named after libertarian economists. But his eccentricities aside, Javier Millet has two main policy proposals regarding the economy. One, as mentioned with the chainsaw, is to cut government spending by more than 50%, completely eliminating several government ministries and privatizing several state-run companies. He hopes that this will get the economy back on track, the reduction of government spending will constrain the monetary supply and reduce inflation, and the privatization will lead to a more efficient and profitable system for these formerly or currently state-run entities that he hopes to make formerly state-run entities. The other is dollarization. He wants to eliminate the Argentine peso, which he believes has been corrupted by the Argentine Central Bank and already has such a dramatic loss in value, and replace it with the U.S. dollar. This has been done in other Latin American countries like Ecuador and El Salvador, but Argentina currently does not have enough physical U.S. dollars to make this transition. Moreover, even though the Argentine public elected Millet by 56%, a rather substantial margin, the Legislative Assembly is much more divided, and his party has a rather small share in both, uh, both sections of the legislature. So he might find it challenging to get a lot of this progress done. Now, that's a very brief introduction, but we're going to take you some, to some deeper insights and analysis from an expert who knows a lot more. Here you'll see my interview that I conducted earlier with Edward C. Prado, the former U.S. Ambassador to Argentina.
I'm speaking right now with Edward C. Prado. He was the U.S. Ambassador to Argentina between 2018 and 2021, and he is currently a litigation uh, counsel at Bracewell LLC. Ambassador Prado, thank you very much for joining Pindrop today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you. So I want to start with the question that I think is on a lot of people's minds. Javier Mille, quite an outsider, he got elected. We'll and by a substantial margin at that, what do you think is the message that Argentinian voters are sending through his election as well as the election of a legislature that isn't ex going to be extremely friendly towards him? Well, I, I don't know how much of your audience is, is familiar with Argentina or the politics of Argentina, but at one point during the Depression, before the Depression, Argentina was a very rich country and uh, Depression hit and it came down uh, and it's never quite recovered. So it's been a hundred years and they've had all sorts of different governments, dictatorships, and the politics have been sort of unstable with, with different types of, of theories being approached and, and it just hasn't gotten back to the level it was. And the, the politics of Argentina are very interesting. Um, you have the Peronists that have been sort of running the show for, for quite some time but here recently, uh, inflation is, if you can believe it, 140%. And you can actually see the price of your bread or your milk go up from one day to the next. Uh, poverty has gone up to 40%. Uh, when I was there about three or four years ago, it was around 20%. Now it's, it's doubled. And the people are frustrated. The front uh, inflation so high. Uh, uh, poverty so high, the economic situation is in turmoil. They had no confidence in, in the government, not only, not only the present government, but the previous administration uh, as well, which uh, I had an opportunity to work with while I was there. So you had the two main political groups uh, buying for the next presidency, uh, and everybody assumed that it would be one or the other, but people were just frustrated and not happy with, with things. And lo and behold, as a surprise, uh, Malay came from nowhere and, and got elected uh, to the surprise of, of many of the experts who did not expect him to come out and win. He, he came out of nowhere. Um, five years ago, you wouldn't have known he, who he was. He started off, he's, a, he, he's an economist, interesting individual, uh, he played in a, in a rock band, and they did a, a they were the cover band for the Rolling Stones once. So he actually played at a concert with the Rolling Stones. He was a minor league soccer player, uh, and played minor league soccer uh, in Argentina. Uh, but he went to college and became an economist, and he started coming out on TV uh, criticizing the government and saying the government was was spending too much money and they had to cut back. And that's how he got started, being on TV as an expert on the economic problems of Argentina um, and uh, had no political party uh, supporting him behind him, just started off by himself. And his political party, if you want to call it that, actually got established by when, him when he started getting into politics here in the last few years. Um, and so he came out of nowhere, but the people were just really frustrated with how conditions are in Argentina. Uh, you know, and it, it's, it's sometimes, it, you know, it's, it's taking a chance on the unknown to some extent because you know what the other two parties were going to offer you and mm -hmm. people were just so frustrated with it. They said, we'll take a chance with this guy, not sure what to expect. Right, absolutely. I, I, I want to ask you as well, drawing on your ambassadorship, uh, because you had the opportunity while you were there of being ambassador during both the tenure of Fernandez, uh, the Peronist incumbent, and one of the very rare non-Peronist uh, uh, presidents in Argentine history, Mauricio Macri. Uh, now, Macri strikes me as an individual whose economic policies were in some ways like a very diet or watered down, you might say, version of, of Millet. But I'm interested to hear uh, your take, having seen that president in action. Do you think Millet is going to be a similar figure in terms of his ambitions and what he's able to achieve? Or is he going to succeed in going steps further? Well, that's going to be a, an interesting thing to, to, to see in what happens, because 
Macri, the previous president before this administration, uh, actually was supporting his his party's candidate um, who lost, and then he turned around and uh, has supported Malay. So uh, Malay, if he's going to get anywhere with the legislature, uh, needs the support of, of some of the legislature to, to support some of his policies. And that's where he's probably going to turn to uh, Macri and his group to see if maybe he can get their help and support in, in passing some of his uh, legislation and some of his policies because by himself he just doesn't have the support in, in Congress that he needs to, to pass some of, his, uh, some of his policies. So will he be working with Macri, uh, with, with Macri is a good question and how far will Macri go in supporting some of uh, Malay's policies because they're still opposite parties. They're, they're not in agreement. Uh, and, and some of Macri's party didn't, didn't like the fact that he came out and endorsed Malay. So how much of Macri's party will actually support Macri in trying to, to convince them to go along with some of, of the policies that uh, Malay is going to uh, try to propose? Uh, on the other major, it has many proposals, although one could argue how formally planned out they are. Uh, the other one we see with Millet very strongly is a complete, it's a significant slashing of government spending, more than 50 percent, eliminating several government ministries. Uh, what strikes me with this plan is it's very shock therapy-like. And broadly speaking, you could say this about a lot of his policies, but it would create a lot of economic difficulty for Argentina in the short term with the anticipation that in the long term it might see greater economic success. Um, Assuming you agree with my premise, which if you don't, feel free to say so, do you think that the Argentinian voters uh, understand that? Do you think that Millet made that clear enough in his election? Are they ready for severe economic hardship in the short term? I think that was uh, his opponent's uh, concern, that you just can't cut government uh, overnight. Uh, the people... There, uh, as a matter of fact, it reminds me of as you were talking that one of his campaign things was that he'd come out with an electric uh, chainsaw and would say, "I'm going to cut government in half and and I'm going to cut it." And and Argentina owes fifty billion dollars to to the rest of the world, primarily the inter, international monetary fund, and they just can't pay their, their, their debt, so they, they don't have uh, the money to, to pay back what they owe, um, but they keep spending because the people have become so used to government subsidies uh, and the government overhires. So for him to come and, and all of a sudden cut back on government subsidies, which now the population, the people are used to, and all of a sudden your electric bill is not going to be subsidized by the government. Uh, your uh, your bus ticket is to get on the bus is going to cost you more than, than it does now. Uh, your Social Security is going to be cut. Your retirement is going to be cut. People are going to be hurting if, if he, in fact, cuts the government spending uh, like he proposes. But if you talk to international people that owe him owe money, they say the government has to budget themselves because they overspend and they're printing money left and right, money they don't have, and that's what's causing inflation. And and Melly's proposal is the way we're going to cut back on inflation is to cut back on spending. But the people have become so used to government money that once it starts hitting your personal pocket, <laughs> we'll see how the people are going to react. You know, yeah, it's good, let's cut, let's cut government spending and we don't need to spend this money and that'll help with inflation. But, oh, wait a minute, don't cut, don't cut my subsidies. Uh, and so when you start hitting people's pocketbook, we'll see what the reaction is going to be if, if he can pass it. And I think getting the legislature to go along with it is going to be tough because you're a congressman running for office and you've got to get elected. And if you go and tell your people that you're going to, you're going to cut their, their subsidies, that's not going to go over too well. So I, I, he'll have a hard time getting it through the legislature and getting law passed that, that cuts back on government spending. But, certainly, but it, it's, almost a, it's almost something that 
that needs to be done. You're between a rock and a hard place. You know, you've got to cut your spending. But if you do that, you know, the people are going to suffer even more, at least for a time being. Right. I think it's a testament in many ways to, like you said, the century long process of decline that Argentina has been in. Um, and that's something that's very hard for an economy to get out of and requires drastic measures in a lot of way. And I think the fall of the Soviet bloc can also sort of attest to those short-term economic challenges to try and foster long-term prosperity. But Ambassador Prado, I, I want to turn one last question that really draws on your position being a diplomat to Argentina from the U.S. What do you see as the implications of this election for U.S. interests? Uh, I know that Millet has uh, talked about pulling out of BRICS. Um, do you think that ultimately this is going to have a major impact or a relatively minor one on relations between Argentina and the rest of the world? He talks very pro-U.S., which from our perspective sounds good and very anti-communist. And he's proposed that he's not going to do business with China and he's not going to do business with Brazil uh, because of their present administration. But one third of their trade of Argentina is with the Chinese and with the Brazilians. So you can't just cut off trading with China and trading with Brazil. Uh, so that was good political talk during the campaign about I'm against communist and all. But I think policy wise, it, it might help us because we are concerned. I think the U.S. policy is concerned with with countries like Venezuela and Nicaragua. Um, left-leaning countries that are uh, that are supportive of, of the Russian policies, of Chinese policies, and, and we want Latin American countries, I think, to, to see more of the U.S. perspective. The present government of Argentina is a little bit left-leaning, and, and they, they want to play both sides, so they, they, they do some things with the Chinese, which make us feel uncomfortable. Uh, and I think now with Malay, he's probably more towards the U.S. against communist countries and left-leaning countries, which I think will make us feel more comfortable. But economically, trade-wise, I, I think he's more open to, to, to that. So I think um, U.S. companies will feel more welcomed with his, his government. Uh, and and might invest more right right now. I think countries are reluctant because of the close to bankruptcy that the country is. Argentina's defaulted on loans I think nine different times, uh, and they're close to, to that point again. Uh, you know, and, and countries are, are reluctant to go there. But with with Malay being uh, more pro U.S., I think you might see more uh, U.S. companies uh, going into Argentina and investing in, in Argentina, which in the long run will help economically that you have foreign investment coming into the country. And the current market reaction to his election seems to reflect that being a very legitimate possibility. Uh, Edward C. Prado was the U.S. Ambassador to Argentina from 2018 to 2021, and he is currently a litigation counsel at Bracewell LLC. Ambassador Prado, thank you for joining Pindrop today. Thank you. Enjoyed it.